Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Collingwood vs Sydney game and what a game it was. Not only for the Swans to climb into the eight, not only for um, that, but also the fact that the Swans actually won the game as a Swans fan. It was really fun. And also the fact that it was a 90-10 split in terms of Collingwood, in terms of the tipping, and this gained me a huge amount of ground. It gave me basically a tip on the whole crowd. And that pretty much set up me to actually come alive in this um, tipping in the final round. I thought I was dead at 224th going into the round, I believe. I need to actually go back and look at that today, if that is actually the case on the, um, the video for that week. Um, I might have even hid my rank because I was so annoyed with that week that we had earlier. I'm going for a couple of upsets and failing. I mean, now I look back on it and think, why did I go for those upsets? If I hadn't gone for them, I would be in with a chance. Um, I would be basically top. But um, yeah, going into this round, into the final round now, because of this result, I am geared up to go. And hopefully, I'm 20th at the moment, hopefully, and I'm one tip away from like fifth or something like that. I'll actually check that whilst in this video. But I'm so close to um, just if we can get one or two results to flip my way um, in the final round, um, then I, I, I'm on here. So I'm on for a top five, which is, I believe, prize paying positions. So let's hopefully we can get to that. But before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on, especially so that you actually know when that video goes live, the tipping video, so you can, um, well, anyone above me can copy my tips so that you can <laughs> get me out of uh, not winning. But um, so you can actually watch that video go through the crazy round that was last round for the tipping and go through my round 10 tips when that comes live. I believe that will be tomorrow's one, the third video tomorrow, as I'm planning on doing three tomorrow, and then just the one on Friday, um, like I usually do with my AFL um, W Fancy Team preview. But anyway, let's get into the video now. And as you can see, it was a 58-39 game between, the, um, between Collingwood and Sydney. And yeah, what a game it was. I mean, it was... I believe Collingwood were up by one, but they were going into the breeze in the last round. Um, and then um, they were up going into the breeze in the quarter one, sorry. And then Sydney kicked, let me actually bring it up for you guys. Um, Sydney kicked, I think it was one point to about oh, 18, something like that. In the second quarter, might have been 17 or not or 19. They might have kicked three goals one or something like that. Um, yeah, they kicked three goals two to one behind in the second quarter, and they got out to a three-goal lead at court at halftime, and that was a, for the Swans, I thought. Yep, they've, they've definitely done the damage here. They'll be able to, like, um, as long as they can be ahead at three-quarter time, that was the main goal, and, I mean, they ran it close. It was, Swans decided not to have a, not to score in the third, and Collingwood piled on two goals four to close it within two points, and then the Swans kicked three goals one to two behind, so the win really paid a massive factor um, and it was really just the Swans' ability in the first quarter to um, to basically nullify the wind um, that won them the game. Because in the second, um, if you look at the second half, it was two goals four. Um, so it was a 16-point swing in terms of the favour of the wind to a um, three goals one, which is 19, to a 17-point um, swing. So there was 16 to 17 swings in terms of the win. So it was all about that first half getting that um, three-goal lead um, and nullifying the wind in the first quarter that basically won the Swans the game as that wind was about 10 or 15-metre um, switch. It was about adding about 5 to 10 metres on most kicks and taking 5 or 10 metres on the opposite end. So it was a huge win, that I, one of the biggest I've seen this season. And yeah, so it basically caused the, that game. Um, so you have Gardner here, 112. She was immense um, yet again, and it's just proved to be such a big factor and such a big coup by the Swans to um, get her in for that uh, number one pick, which I believe was basically Hoare in 26, I believe was what they gave for her. Um, and yeah, so that was absolutely huge. And um, yeah, so I'm actually just quickly looking through the um, tips for like the tipping rankings, and I can see that... I am one tip away from fifth place, which is, I believe, a prize paying position. So I am literally just get, I'm just, if I hold my margin and get a nine out of nine, I'm pretty much destined to get a, um, to get a prize, which would be huge. But, um, yeah, that is the main goal, obviously. Um, let me just see what a, 
I'm trying to see, but I can't see that. Well, anyway, that's uh, so that pretty much sum summarizes that uh, that video in like 30 seconds. That's going to come out tomorrow. But yeah, so Gardner was huge. Um, Hurley had a huge fourth quarter. I believe she kicked two goals in the fourth and had about two or three tackles in the fourth. Let me bring up the stats for the fourth quarter on my phone here quickly. Um, two goals, five touches, three tackles, and Mark. So yeah, huge quarter for her, 42 fantasy points. And Gardner was six touches and five tackles, which sort of just proves that the Swans in the last quarter just put on tackling pressure. Kennedy had three tackles, Ham two, um, Heads two, Lockard two in that last quarter. So they, I think they tackled... Had a lot more tackles than um, than the likes of um, Collingwood in the last quarter, which really provided that um, oomph at the end and got them over the line. As you can see, tackling was 87 to 57, a huge tackling uh, gap. And, um, I mean, they barely lost the marks as well. And, I mean, they destined to lose the, the hit-outs given that what we had seen um, previously with uh, Frederick being one of the best... Um, hit out Ruckman in the comp um, with the most, I believe, at the moment. And that's why I knew that she was going to be a good selection. And um, so that's why I tried to get her. I just failed with the Montana Ham one, which we'll get to in a second, where she scored 41. And you'll see here, if you look the quarter by quarter, uh, where is she? 23-2-7-9, yeah. If she had done a 23 and then got another 23, it would be in the 60s or 70s. She'd be up at the 710, 720k range. And I'd have more rain to get a better um, midfielder in for her. But obviously that didn't occur. Um, so it sort of stuck. And Hurley was definitely the better option. Kennedy, 84, was really, really good down back. Wasn't expecting her to do that. Um, I don't know if her role changed necessarily. And that caused that. But obviously an 84 is decent. Uh, Malloy somehow kicked three goals in the end. I believe two of them might... Did two of them come in the last quarter? Or was it just even splits? Uh, one in the last... Um, obviously none in the third and then two in the second as well so they all came with the breeze which mostly happened for both sides obviously um, except for this one's I think three goals into the breeze there was no, no other goals kicked into the breeze um, in the whole game which is quite ridiculous um, head 77 huge last quarter in the end she's just been one of the best uh, pickups this year to be honest with you at 500 odd K to average in the, I believe, she, is she almost top five defenders? Um, average, she is, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh best defender. So as you can see, the defenders wise are pretty much got a spot on. And heads also, um, I mean, you've got Emanson who had a 48 as well. So there's some, some of these girls could easily drop and she could flick ahead of them, which would be quite an amazing uh, feat, to be honest with you. Um, just looking here, they've all played nine. So yeah, she might not jump ahead of them, but she could run it close with all of them. Um, and for her to be a mid-pricer and get top seven is pretty good. Uh, McAvoy, 74. Privatelli, 74. Hamilton's 56. Tarrant, 56. Mitchell, 54. She's actually come back into some form when she's um, after she had a little while away from the game with injuries. Um, Whelan, 52. Hamilton, 47, didn't get involved in much. I believe she got involved a lot in the... Was it early or late in the game? Early in the game. She was on 35 at halftime and then fell away a little bit. Just doesn't have that cemented role, which really sucks. Um, and had to, I think, even go in the ruck at one point. It was quite ridiculous with the uh, Frederick rucking to Malloy and, um, Malloy and Hamilton. Then you had Stein. Ham as well, she just didn't get going. After quarter time, she kicked that goal and then just stopped. She was on about five touches or four touches and then um, and had a goal as well and then just didn't get going after that. I thought that was a really good selection at about quarter time and then it just absolutely did nothing after that, which sort of sucks. Sergeant Williams, Woodward, um, Newman, Lockhart, McCarthy, Smith, and then we move on to Collingwood and basically it was just Frederick and that was about it pretty much. Frederick, two, uh, 12 disposals, 4 marks, 2 tackles, 39 hitouts, 2 goals for a 103 is absolutely huge. And if you look at it here, you can just see those 2nd and 4th quarters into the breeze. She did nothing much, but outside of that, the 38 and the 32, I believe they had goals involved to get to that, um, including marks as well. So those were 2 of her marks um, involved there in those quarters for a 103 game is a pretty good game. And that's why I brought her in, as I believe she's a top 5 forward. Campbell, 81, Can 79, Bro, seven, uh, Davey, 70. So she's really started to slow down since um, that big first game. Um, 
Uh, Rose, 67. Morris Dalton, 59. Sheridan, 56. Livingston. Benicia, only a 48. So she really, really did struggle and really, really um, did sort of show that um, there's a gap between that, that you can't really have her as that M5. And, I mean, it didn't help, didn't, it helps that she's um, owned by, I don't know exactly how many uh, own her, but I'm pretty sure it's in the 10s or 20, um, 6.82%. So that was a fair effort. Uh, well, that was sort of made that um, ham blunder not as bad that she was owned so highly. Cincinnati, James Brazel, uh, Fowler, Morris, Smith, Casey, and Lynn. And that pretty much is the video on one of the well, my favourite games of the round, to be honest. Obviously, as a Swan supporter, getting up over Collingwood is a good um, good result. And it was just, I think, a really hard-fought game. There was a lot of just um, a lot of high-pressure um, acts and stuff like that. And a lot of tense moments, to be honest. And some just really um, precise footy from the Swans that got them over the line as they ended up kicking, was it nine goals, four in the end, I believe, to... Um, Nine goals, four to five goals, nine. So Collingwood even had an extra sh um, scoring shot, but then uh, lost by 19. So just shows the efficiency from the Swans was there, and that's why in the end they got over the line uh, against uh, the Pies. But that is the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be the Adelaide North Melbourne game recap. Bye, guys.